Now, from water shortages to wildfires, the past 12 months have raised global awareness about the economic and human cost of extreme heat events. Many other European countries are also suffering unusually extended periods of very hot weather. And that's what we've been seeing in these spectacular images from across the globe in Berlin, at the Colosseum in Rome. It's the longest eclipse this century, nearly two hours. There is a storm raging inside It cannot be contained, not this time You better hide, you better run Cause once the time comes the earth will be gone oh. How unusual are the extreme heat events we've been witnessing this year? Well, at the moment, these events still feel slightly unusual. We sort of talk about record temperatures, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere. But if we start looking forward and factor in climate change, this will become the new normal. There's no escape. Rain starts to fall and the light starts to fade. He's there a man brave to fight. The Mendocino Complex fire has become the largest wildfire in California history. The blaze has devoured more than 1,017 square kilometers. 450 square miles. It is already the biggest ever recorded in California. It is one of 17 large fires burning in the state. It's now the largest wildfire in state history, nearly the size of Los Angeles. The biggest one, the car fire, scorching 150 square miles. This, as we're seeing new images showing that tornado of fire from the air, growing explosively late Thursday afternoon, eating its way through entire communities. Months of exceptionally dry weather combined with high winds and temperatures reaching about 40 degrees Celsius have created conditions firefighters say they have never before experienced. The city of Reading, home to more than 90,000 people, was in its path. Firefighters are using the term fire tornado to describe it. He took us into a neighborhood left devastated, in part by a fire vortex. Wow. Yeah. A weather pattern created by this fire, something that hasn't been seen here in a generation. A European Space Agency astronaut captured these photos of the fire from the International Space Station in orbit. But in the space of 48 hours, it had tripled in size. And then on Thursday night, the blaze exploded. This has been the scariest one because it was so angry. For a second day, the so-called Holy Fire erupted in Southern California, sending plumes of smoke thousands of feet into the air. The Holy Fire named for Holy Jim Canyon, where it started. Forrest Clark allegedly sent an email warning this place will burn before the fire broke out on Monday. I've never seen a fire with such destruction here in this area ever before. Today we learned July was the hottest month on record in California. This is no ordinary fire. After sunset, the winds have picked up and made the fire increase in size overnight. This is highly unusual. A once lively little town of about 700 people now resembles something like a faraway planet from a science fiction movie. Look at this. Yeah. I mean, and gone. It's the middle of the day, but the sun can barely be seen because it's so gray and dark here. The sun can barely peek out through the thick layer of smoke and ash that covers the air, not only here, but in this entire region of California. And we haven't even hit peak fire season yet here in California. David? Yeah, that's the unbelievable part of all this. Scientists say rising global temperatures are leading to a higher risk of wildfires in the western United States. A terrible outbreak of a toxic algae known as red tide is killing thousands of sea creatures in southwest. Now with the environmental disaster plaguing more than 100 miles of American coastline. This is an extremely unusual event for us. This is what a marine disaster looks like. Beaches littered with dead fish, manatees, 
even a whale shark washing ashore. I've been here for 20 years and this is probably the worst I've ever seen. They're dying by the tens of thousands. Fish, eels, turtles, sometimes as far as the eye can see in parts of southwest Florida. The red tide, which typically goes away in spring, has persisted for nine months. This is the worst it's been, it's uh, by far. For stranded dolphins, six in 24 hours. It's pretty stinky out here and it's just a mess. Really, as far as you can see, there are just nothing but dead fish, even some eel that are out here that are dead. Let me get to one that's close to right. In his 28 years living in St. James City, he's never seen a fish kill as big as this. It's absolutely devastating. This was one for the history books, the longest lunar eclipse in this century. For more than a hundred minutes, the blood moon bathed the night skies with its red glow, captivating Greek gods and ordinary mortals. We all remember the great American eclipse that was almost one year ago now. And tonight, a spectacular event seen around the world, the longest total lunar eclipse of the century. Rome has a stunning skyline, but tonight the real spectacle was the sky itself. It was a spectacular sight that dazzled stargazers across the world. This was a free show with no regard for borders. They gazed at the same moon in Gaza, in Israel, in Egypt. It was the night of the red moon and the red planet. Mars was closest to the Earth and brightest in 15 years. Oh my God, the Earth is shaking after the second deadly earthquake in a week. The magnitude 6.9 quake struck sending worshipers right there running to escape a mosque. The quake struck the island of Lombok at around 6.45 p.m. local time and rattled nearby islands, including the popular tourist destination of Bali, sending panicked crowds into the streets Sunday night. Bali trembling so long. Not long after the earthquake, another shock, a tsunami warning. And down near Simcoe and Bremner, it was a virtual river in the streets. You can see the water lapping up there as the heavy rain continues to hit one of the more prone spots in the Wendy Squirrel captured this nutty scene showing some vehicles in one of the city's pricey new streetcars stranded under the flooded King Street West Bridge near Liberty Village. Wendy, who lives in the area, described the dire situation streetcar passengers found themselves in as well as some of the shenanigans that ensued. Much of Australia's pastoral heartland has turned to dust. It's an overwhelming drought. These cattle swarm around a water truck in New South Wales looking for relief from the devastating dryness. The ground has become too bare for grass to grow and the weather too extreme to predict. It's been one of the driest years on record. Crops are failing, reservoirs have dried up, and many farmers are spending tens of thousands of dollars a week importing feed and water from less badly affected areas. So I was a boy in uh, 65 drought. I was only 16 year old, come home from school, and that was pretty horrendous drought. That was known to be the father of all droughts, but this one is far worse. On Sunday night, the out of control flames threatened homes in the hilly Monchik district. That was after near record temperatures that reached almost 47 degrees in some areas. The heat waves blame for causing wildfires across northern Europe. High temperatures and weeks of drought contributed to major wildfires, forest fires that is in Sweden and in neighboring Norway as well, following its hottest recorded temperature in May. Forests in Latvia were torched and the border between Finland and Russia was closed because of fires there. We've seen wildfires in places unprepared for such outbreaks due to unusually hot weather. 
Drought and blistering heat have been turning forests into tinderboxes in places that were previously fire-free. These satellite images show just to what extent the heat has taken its toll on Europe, with droughts across the continent causing crop failure. Extreme conditions which scientists say could soon become the new norm. A mountain glacier in Sweden melted so much it's no longer that country's highest point, while down at sea level folks flocked to the beach. By a bend in the river, Spain's hottest town. It's only mid-morning and the temperature in Montoro is already above 30 Celsius. 92-year-old olive farmer Pedro Moya is sure that every year the summer months are getting hotter. If it carries on like this, I think the earth could catch fire and the world would come to an end. Sweden has experienced 65 fires already this year, up from an annual average of three fires over the past decade. Blazes are now happening as far north as the Arctic Circle. That's according to Copernicus, the European Union's Earth Observation Programme. At least 91 people died last month in the worst wildfire to hit Greece in decades. Fire raced through a seaside area northeast of Athens. Wildfires, which are a regular problem in summer months, are fueled by these hot, dry conditions. We witnessed the fire devastation last week in Greece. Um, I remember when I first really noticed the, the change in climate it was in the middle 90s at, at the El Nino year. If you broke a temperature record, it was by 0.1 or 0.2. So it was a rare event. Okay. To break a record by three or four degrees was unprecedented, unheard of. So I thought, well, this isn't just El Nino. There's something else going on here. And this is what we're seeing. We've seen most years since that records uh, in any one place are broken by more than a degree, you know, a significant amount. Temperatures in Europe are soaring close to their highest ever. 48 degrees Celsius is the current record set in the Greek capital, Athens, back in 1977. This weekend's continental heat wave is expected to smash that all-time high. Hot air from Africa is baking Spain and Portugal and the Iberian Peninsula. Highs of 36 degrees Celsius in Rome, 40 in Seville, and 41 in Merida in Spain. Europe is sweltering, with temperatures that are too hot to handle for some residents in Madrid. In the Netherlands, officials had to close some roadways because the intense heat melted the asphalt. At the peak of the tourist season, temperature records that have stood for four decades are falling. Now the hot air is moving north towards France, where forecasters are predicting a peak of 36 degrees in Paris and Lyon on Tuesday. Three cities in France have banned high emissions cars from the roads to manage the pollution amid the high temperatures. Dutch people are sweltering in their longest ever recorded heat wave. Water shortages are beginning in the Netherlands. In Germany, the unusually hot summer has resulted in the nation's earliest recorded grape harvest. The extra heat and sunlight has caused the fruit to mature much faster than expected. I grew up on a vineyard around here. I'm 52 years old and I've never seen the grape picking season start in the first week of August. And northern latitude countries worldwide are facing their hottest summers in history. Dozens of Japanese died of heat-related conditions in the past three months as temperatures topped 40 degrees. South Korea had record-breaking highs this week. 52 degrees was recorded in California's Death Valley last month. What, what's really outstanding about this summer is not that we just have it warm in Europe, but that we've seen records falling from California all the way to, to Japan. So we've got to make the assumption that these things will keep getting worse and worse year upon year, whatever we do. But in the past, probably when you and I were children, we expect the weather to move around, such as we got a day of rain, a couple of days of sunshine, and then it would rain again. So that is a moving pattern. The weather patterns tend to move around the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. We're talking about the Northern Hemisphere summer now, but what seems to have happened, well, what obviously has happened this year, uh, is the movement has stopped. Also, uh, an important indicator of how the, the planet and the climate system as a whole is changing. 
Uh, and in fact, it would be fair to say we don't know what the full consequences would be. So uh, as the ocean becomes increasingly exposed to the atmosphere, that, ch that has the potential to change ocean circulation in ways that could affect uh, large parts of the planet. On camera, a fire NATO in the British Midlands. It was sparked by a massive fire Tuesday. The uh, fire NATO occurred after a layer of cool air got on top of the hot air, causing a swirl similar to the way a tornado is formed. It took 10 fire trucks from three fire companies to get that fire.